Listen, if you got your Bibles, as, as they say in Israel, bu- 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 bust them out. We're going to 1 Corinthians tonight, and um, we'll be in um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I am going to do a quick review of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 12, because it really sets things up. And um, Pastor Gail's in the house tonight, which um, I'm so blessed. Uh, she preached at our 9 o'clock and our 11 o'clock. She did this message on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 13, and she hit a home run. It was anointed, such an amazing atmosphere. I love Pastor Gail. Um, I'm nervous I have to teach in front of her tonight, so I hope I do. I hope I do good. I hope I do all, 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 all right. Now, I, I will say this. We only have eight weeks left, and we'll be done with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Going through, the, We've gone almost. We will have gone through the entire book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And it has just been an incra- a crazy journey. We've been calling it Church Under Fire because the church of Jesus Christ is under fire right now. And it's good. It's not a fire that's destroying, but it is certainly a fire that's realigning, reorganizing all of the priorities and values of the church of Jesus Christ in the United States of America. Okay? And so we see here in Corinth, the church of Jesus Christ was also under fire, okay? Internally and externally. How many times do you ever feel like you're under fire internally <laughs> and externally. Yeah? And so anyways, um, we're looking at this church. Now, last week in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said, now concerning supernatural gifts, con- concerning supernatural realities, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be uninformed. He says, Church, there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There, are, there is a, there is a, ut- all right, so superhero analogy. Just bear with me, okay? Some of you are into superheroes, I can tell, and some of you aren't, and I can tell. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but superhero analogy. So Batman, okay, has a utility belt, and it's full of, tools and gadgets. It's full of um, tools that help him get the job done. The funny thing about Batman is he's got stuff in there um, that, 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 that he doesn't even know is in there. It's just like, especially the old Batmans from the 1960s. Uh, here's an example. Batman is hanging on a ladder on a helicopter, and, and the helicopter lowers down into the water, and, it, and when he comes out of the water, there's a shark hanging off of his leg. Batman reaches down into his utility belt and pulls out shark repellent. I'm not making this up. This is the 1960s Batman. He, he just so happens to have shark repellent in his utility belt, and he begins spraying this shark that has him by the leg. Here's, here's the point. Paul says to the church in Corinth, you've got access to things that you don't even know about. Regarding supernatural realities, regarding grace gifts, you're trying to do things in and of yourselves. You're trying to do things in the natural, but according to the Spirit, you have access to things that you don't even know that you have access to. You're trying, this is what Paul's saying. He's saying, Corinth, you're trying to be Batman, but you're not using your utility belt because you don't even know you have a utility belt. I'm glad you guys are as excited about this as I am. I, I'm yelling at you about Batman, okay? And, and then he begins to say, this is what you have access to. All of these supernatural gifts, okay? And, and, and there's awesome stuff. Utterances of wisdom, utterances of knowledge, okay? Um, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, okay? Um, uh, 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 tongues, interpretation of tongues, all empowered by the same spirit. Hey, Seattle Revival Center, you've got access to grace gifts. You've got access to a utility belt. He has equipped you with all kinds of things. And I'm talking about you right now. I'm not talking about me. 
Amen, Darren, come on. Now, here's the thing. Within the church, we think that, that ministry, signs, wonders, and miracles, that's for the dudes with microphones. Listen, a thousand sermons from Pastor Darren's not going to change Seattle. The body of Christ, the bride of Christ that, that says that we're going to love mercy, we're going to do justice, we're going to walk humbly before God, that when, there's, that when there's vehicles and agencies and institutions of injustice and people say, somebody's got to do something, I'm going to be that somebody. You're going to be that somebody. Somebody's got to do something. Yeah, that somebody is the church. We're not talking about the building. We're talking about you and I. And this is what Paul says to Corinth. This is what Paul says to Seattle Bible Center. Hey, don't be ignorant. You've got access to grace gifts. And this is what he says. It's been given to the church, all of these gifts. It's been given to the church, these offices. And he talks about the church and being built on the office of the apostle and the prophet. He says the, the, that Jesus in his grace has given to the church um, uh, ministers, ministries, and gifts and they're all different and then he says isn't that cool this is it this is I mean I don't know what you're translating at the end, at the end of chapter 12 he says earnestly desire spiritual gifts why because they're really really stinking cool and you need them Listen, in 2021, the supernatural is not a luxury. It's a necessity. If we're going to do what God is calling for us to do, we're going to need to access our supernatural God and the supernatural gifts. Don't be ignorant. Don't think that you're smart enough to change the world. You might be kind of smart and kind of great. You're not smart enough to change the world. You're going to need the mind of Christ. You're going to need to be able to say, like Paul, I have the mind of Christ. Paul had that moment. That moment where it's like, I don't know what, what we ought to do in and of myself, but I've been downloaded with the mind of Christ. OMG, I know Kung Fu. Whoa, right? He says, this is awesome. This is all review, guys. This is all last week. And then this is what he says. This is all awesome. And yet, I will show you a more excellent way. The things of the supernatural are awesome. Don't be ignorant. You need to know about the supernatural. You need to know about gifts. You need to know about apostles, prophets, miracles, and helps, and visions. You know, and I see in the spirit and the glory and the angels better than miracles, better than breakthrough, better than breaker. This angel, that angel, this is it. The first, the second, the third heaven. Oh my God. Who wants to go on a tour of heaven? I'm leading them. You know, hey, you see all of this. This is amazing. Did you watch Sid Roth this last week? You know, I mean, it's just the stuff that's happening on the earth. This is absolutely incredible. And yet Paul says, oh, this is awesome. And yet I'll show you a better way, a better way, a better way. I don't know about you. I want the best way. I want the better way. Seattle's deserving of a better way. I, I'm watching the city. I'm watching the news. I see what's happening in the United States of America. And I, this is what I know. God did not create the heavens and the earth to look the way it looks. You're watching the news. You say, this is not the better way. You're watching your neighborhood. You're watching your schools. You're looking at everything. And, you, and I know what you're thinking. Man, screw this. I'm going to Texas. Man, if one more family from SRC says, I'm going to Texas, I'm going to go to your house and lock your door and say, you are staying. I know five families that are moving. Now, God bless them. But this is a dark, stinking place. And we need some light. Yeah. Seattle's pretty bland. We need some salt. And not just salt. We need salty salt. We need the kind of salt that makes people thirsty. You can't be a Christian and be boring. 
You can't be a Christian and be traditional. How traditional is Jesus? Hey, Jesus, what are we going to do today? Uh, I don't know, whatever the Father wants to do. Where are we going to go? I don't know, wherever the Father wants to lead us. Jesus, I need to arrange our day timer for the next three. No, no, no. Why? Because Jesus says, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me, but I'm on a need-to-know basis. Listen, God wants to do some things through you, but here's the thing. If you surrender your all to Jesus, get this. He's going to freak you out. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to need the Holy Spirit, not just for some tongues. You're going to need the Holy Spirit because you're going to need a comforter. Jesus said, hey, you're going to go into all the world and good news the whole world. But first, you're going to need a comforter. Why? Because you're about to freak out. They're going to try to kill you. Some of you, they are going to kill you. In fact, all the apostles of the New Testament church, you're all going to die. Violent, brutal, hideous deaths. Everyone except for the apostle John. What's going on with John? No one really knows what happened to John. You know, the guy might, the guy might be in Texas for all we know. <laughs> Going to Troy Brewer's church, who knows? <laughs> Seattle, we need the more excellent way. Believer, you need the more excellent way. Unbeliever, you need the most excellent way. Hey, there's a better way. And tomorrow, Monday, you might need to shake yourself before you start acting on Monday and say, I don't have to act Monday. There's a better way. You get on Facebook about to blast that Democrat. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a better way. There's a better way. There's a higher way. About to write that email to me, about to blast Darren. Hey, hey, hey. There's a better way. And that's what I pray, is that this week, because you were here tonight, there's not just information, but there's revelation that brought a transformation, because that's what the Word of God does. This is the Bible. This is the Word of God. It's alive. It's active. It's a portal. You don't read your Bible. Your Bible reads you. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa how'd you know that about me? Ah, that hurts so good. Someone say, hey, hey. hey, hey. Let's, let's try again. Someone say, hey, hey. hey, hey. There's, a There's a better way. And that's what you need to say this week. Hey, there's a better way. And your dog's going to be thankful when you're not kicking it anymore. Your dog's going to write me an email. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is what I want to do. Every time we read the word love, I want you to declare love. A love declaration. Is that good? We're going to read it a few times. This is, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but I have not love. This is what he says. If you can speak in tongues, that's cool, of men. All right, sweet. And of angels. How many of you are communicating to angels in a tongue? Don't raise your hand. I'll think you're weird. <laughs> he says, you're doing this, but you don't have love. That sound and frequency is a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Beautiful gift, radically annoying. Why? You're lacking love. Okay. All right. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Verse 2. And if I have prophetic powers, okay, that's cool, and the understanding of all mysteries, that's really cool. And if I have all knowledge, that, that's amazing. And if I have all faith, okay, so that I can remove mountains, pause. Listen, if you can move mountains with your faith, you got yourself a ministry, You, could, you, you got yourself a business card, right? Darren Stott, you know, MMM, Mountain Mover Ministries, right? Like, hey, what's your name? You're, okay, awesome. What's your, I'm Darren Stott. What do you do? Yeah, I move mountains by faith. 
What do you do? End to the third power. Mountain moving ministries. That's, that's amazing. And yet, you have not love. And have not love. I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, if I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. It doesn't profit me anything. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on getting its own way. And now what? It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings. Did you hear what that minister did? What a failure. But rejoices with the truth. Love bears, whoa. Love, 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 love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what Seattle needs. That's what your home needs. That's what your marriage needs. That's what your children needs. That's what tonight needs. That's what Darren needs. That's what our staff needs. That's what we all need is to go deeper into that place of I can endure. I'm not going to quit. Why? Because of the supernatural capacity of love that I'm walking in. Love it never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, everyone say amen. amen. We know in part so many things we don't know. Okay? And we prophesy in part. That's really, really important. Pastor Darren, did you hear the prophetic word? Yeah. That was only part of the word. No, no, no. I read the whole word. Right. That was only part of the word. Why? Every prophetic word is just a part of the picture. Just like every member is just a part of the body. No individual member makes up the entire composition of the body. In the same way, the flutist is not the entire orchestra. If you're only listening to one voice, you're only listening to a part, and most likely, you've become a clone. Clone trooper. All right. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up my childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, for I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I have become fully known. Get in that huge argument, you get in that huge fight, that fight with your spouse, you say things, things happen, words were said. Why? Because you were making an argument, you were making a stance, you were fighting about a little, little, witty, bitty, bitty, teeny, witty, 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 witty part. You're about to shipwreck your whole thing because of a witty, 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 you're about to call your wife a name because of was, 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 was. things they seem so important to us. The body of Christ does some things that the body of Christ should never do. Why? Because of a molehill, a little weirdy, 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 weirdy molehill, and we're treating it like a mountain. Why? Because of our partial revelation. Because, because partial revelation, a fractional revelation is dwarfing the massive 
love of God. And this is what happens in the church. We take a, we take a speck and we say, this speck justifies me. It gives me permission to take the love of God and to put it over here. Why? Because of the gravity of this little speck of dirt. Things get way completely out of balance. And when you find yourself out of balance, you know how you, know how you act when you're out of balance? Not like Jesus. How do you respond when you're out of balance? You respond like that person you said you would never be. I swear I'll never be like him when I grow up. And then all of a sudden, all these words are spewing out. Of, why? Because you're out of balance. What happened? The love of God, okay? The love of God is removed from the equation, and you're operating according to a small little part. You know, whenever I hear a prophetic word and it robs me of hope, and all of a sudden there's fear that fills my heart, I bless the person that gave the word. But I said, that's the little, 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 witty, bitty part. So I'm not going to entertain fear in my heart because of their part. Why? Because I have the love of Christ. Imperfect love cast out all So when your heart gets full of fear, you say, no, that's just a little, little, little bitty part. I'm not going to allow my heart to lose hope because of that part. And the time will come. You'll be fully known. The curtains will be open wide. And his glory will come and bring illumination. You will fully know even as you're fully known. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you will know Kung Fu. All right. Whoa. So now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Hey, hey. There's a more excellent way. Hey. There's a better way. You get into a fight. Just say, hey. There's a better way. How many know um, Bob Jones, the contemporary... uh, prophet who's now with the Lord, went to be with the Lord on Valentine's Day. Why was that significant? Because he died years prior. And when he died, he went before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, Bob, have you learned to love? And he hadn't learned to love. So the Lord sent him back, and he got to redo life and ministry His wife passed away. He got to be married again. And Bonnie Jones um, uh, did life with him. And and he got a second chance to learn to love. And it was Bob that believed that the fruit of the Spirit had a natural corresponding fruit. It's kind of interesting. I went and ministered at 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 a Baptist church because they wanted me to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And, and they gave me permission to be the weirdo that I am, okay? The Bible's weird. I'm weird. Jesus is crazy, by the way. Read Revelation. Sword coming out of his mouth, all tatted up, fire everywhere, riding a horse. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's my God. You know what I'm saying? So they invited me to come. And we were talking about ways that God speaks. And one of the ways that we talked about is that God can speak to all of our senses because God doesn't just speak English. He speaks through all of our senses, through our ears, our feeling, even taste. I said to these Baptist peeps, okay, how many of you have ever tasted a supernatural taste? Somebody raised their hand. I, I know Pentecostals, we couldn't even have this conversation. I, I, you know, I, I know tongue talkers, you say supernatural taste, and they're like, ah, you know. 
We're at a baptism. The person raised their hand. said, what did you experience? I led my friend to the Lord. And when I led him to the Lord, I had the supernatural taste of oranges. Oranges. He'd never be able to figure this. I led my friend to the Lord and my mouth filled with the taste of oranges. Why oranges? And Pastor Darren, why do you have 27 oranges behind you? Bob believed that the fruit of the spirit of love, the very first fruit mentioned, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kind. He believed it was the fruit of an orange. It reminded him of the sun. It reminded him of Psalm chapter 2, verse 12, where it says, kiss the sun. And Bob would say, we are, we are sun-kissed. He'd say, some of you need to be sun-kissed. Bob would explain that the Lord is our great pleasure. And as we fall in love with him, we won't be able to help ourselves. That intimacy with the Lord will produce a selfless expression of love. It'll overflow out of us and into this world. When Paul talks about love, he's referring to the word agape. This is a huge, huge, huge word. You wanna know why? It means generosity with no strings attached. It means I give, I give, I give, not expecting anything in return. I give selflessly, I give sacrificially because I love you and I want nothing from you. What's the opposite of love? Selfishness. The opposite of love is where we give, we give, we give. Did you know that you can practice the five love languages and not have agape? Did you know that I can shower you with gifts, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch? I can connect with you in all of these ways, but if I'm saying what's in it for me, it is not love. That's selfishness. This is what Paul said. These three, faith, hope, and love but the greatest of these is love Jesus would tell Nicodemus for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to do what? to cut the strings religion would say perform, perform, perform you might be accepted Jesus said, I'm accepting you before you've even done anything. He said, Jesus treated people like they belonged before they even believed. Jesus treated outsiders like they were sons and daughters before they ever said a sinner's prayer. Jesus said, come and follow me and I'll turn you into something. Turn you into what? I'll turn you into a fisher of men. They had no idea what, what he was even talking about. The time came when Jesus said, I no longer servants. I never no longer call, call you servants. I now call you a friend. Why? Because I love you. And I want to share with you my secrets. You see, you can come to church and take notes and you can get your act together. You can stop swearing as much, okay? Hey, 
At least I don't say the F word anymore. I still say a lot of other words. At least I don't say that one. We can try to clean ourselves all, all the way up and, and we can say, how does a Christian act? How does a Christian? And, and it turns into kind of a big performance. Why? Because of fear. Fear. Fear of being rejected. Nobody wants to be rejected. And so we start to jump through kind of the church hoops, the church different things. What does Jesus want to do? He wants to cut the strings. Why? Because he says, bro, I love you so stinking much that I'm going to give you my very best and I'm not expecting you to do anything back. You are radically and infinitely loved. The prophet Jack Frost saw a move of God coming. If you've never heard Jack Frost before, YouTube him this week and just start to listen to his prophetic words. He prophesied of a coming move of God. He prophesied where all of these different kinds of streams would begin to come together to form a river. How many know that in the church we've got a lot of streams? We've got prophetic streams and teaching streams and community church streams and apostolic streams. What stream are you in? I don't know. I just go to SRC, whatever stream they're in, right? That's cool, all right? <laughs> what stream are we? I, I don't know. Jack Frost saw the church as these fragmented individual streams, and then he saw them starting to come together to form a river. And then he saw the river of God, and it began to flow, and it emptied out into what? into the ocean. And this is what Jack Frost said. We are coming into a move of God and it's not a stream. It's not a river. It's the ocean of the Father's love. The earth has never seen what's about to be released. We are about to enter into the days of the unprecedented. We are about to enter into an era where the church walks in the love of God and the power of God. We are about to see the bride of Christ that speaks in tongues of men and angels and has love. We're about to see a church that has prophetic powers and understanding of mysteries and knowledge and faith, so much so that they could speak to a mountain and the mountain would be removed and they have love. We're about to see a church that's willing to give away all they have to deliver up their body to be burned, but they have love. We're about to see a church that is patient and kind, that does not envy or boast, that is not arrogant or rude, that does not insist on getting its own way, is not irritable or resentful, that does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but it rejoices the truth, that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. We're about to see a church that walks in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13. We're about to see a church that walks in power and love. This is the choice. You don't have to choose between power or love, prophetic or love, Bible or love. It's about a church that walks in both power and love. here tonight and you need love Jesus is here he can transform you he can set you free he can cut off addiction in a moment we've seen it happen it might be a process or it could be a moment if you need hope tonight you can have hope tonight if you need the power of God Jesus is here to release that but guess what happens Jesus comes and he does something in your life and all of a sudden, you begin to testify of what Jesus is doing, and your testimony turns into prophecy, and all of a sudden, you begin to model New Testament Christianity, where you're walking in power, and power and love. How many of you have ever heard of um, Smith Wigglesworth? How 
of you have never heard of Smith Wigglesworth. You've never heard of him. Smith was a plumber. He was a plumber. And guess what happened? The plumber had an encounter with the power of God. And he got this revelation. And the revelation was the violent take it by force. Smith would say, God's either going to move his hand or I'm going to move it for him. No joke, this plumber saw a baby come back to life. A dead baby came back to life. Y'all know how it happened? He kicked the baby off the stage. Drop kicked a dead baby and the baby came back to life. Smith Wigglesworth would throw dead bodies against the wall. Command live. I said live. Oh, and let him drop. And the body would hit the ground. He'd pick him back up. I said you live in the name of Jesus. Throw him against the wall and drop. He'd pick him up again. He said, I said you live in the name of Jesus. Throw him against the wall. And that time they don't drop. They come right back to life. And this is what the old plum plumber said. He said, the secret to the miraculous is faith mixed with love. You see, people say, how, how is that love? How is that love? Well, I don't know. Sometimes we say love is just comfort. And listen, when somebody's grieving, it's good to be comforted. But if I lost a child and I could pick between comfort or you bringing that my baby back, I'd say you do whatever God tells you to do. I want my baby back. Love doesn't have to be just comfort. Love can be violent. Love is that place where we show up, where we speak up, where we stand up, where we say, somebody's got to do something. That somebody is the bride of Christ. That somebody is a bride that doesn't just love, but they've got power and authority to do something. So that's where I wanted to come from tonight. Yes, love. Faith, hope, love. Yes, love. Yes, awesome. But this is what I really want to get the point. The point. Darren, what's the point? The point is this. It's both and. It's both and. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12 with the better way. And at the end of the day, hey, 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 there's a better way. And it's the way of love. You want to be around a while? You don't have to be like milk. You don't have to have an expiration date. You know what religion does? It puts an expiration date on you. It always says you, you got to have new revelation to stay relevant. You got to have a new message. You got to. I heard one minister say, I'm going through a whole process of rebranding and reinventing myself. I got to figure out how to reinvent myself. No, no, no. You only have to think that way if you've got an expiration date. That's what religion does. It puts an expiration date on you. You want to be relevant? Forget about being relevant. Remember the most excellent way. I might look like a complete and total idiot, but my vow is to love you, Jesus, and to love your church. To love the Lord and to love your people. To do right by God, to do right by my family, to do right by my marriage, to do right by the church. That we love God, that we love each other as we love ourselves. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, hey, there's a better way. Say love. Let's stand to our feet. Let's pray. You want to know the most difficult person to love? You. If you can learn to love you, you can love anyone. We just ask the Holy Spirit just to come.
forget about me. Don't look at me. You don't need me. I'll be just fine. Thanks. Close your eyes. Let's block out this natural world. And let's tune in to the world of our Father. Holy Spirit, would you show us any way that we've word cursed ourselves? Holy Spirit, would you show us any blockages, love blockages, where we've been incapable of loving others because we've been incapable of loving ourselves? Holy Spirit, would you reveal right now any judgments in our heart that we've made against ourselves? Any unrighteous judgments, unfair judgments that we've made towards ourselves? Would you speak right now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now just ask, Holy Spirit, would you show me when I made that judgment. Now, just ask the Holy Spirit, Jesus, how was that judgment wrong or inaccurate? Spirit of truth, I invite you What's the truth about me? Now let's pray together. Just pray after me. Jesus, I renounce the lie and the judgment that is inaccurate that I made against myself. The lie that, now just confess that judgment out loud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't listen to the person next to you, okay? <laughs> and I accept the truth that you say about me that I am... Now, I want you to declare the truth of yourself right now, okay? Let's pray. Say, Jesus, I repent for this judgment against myself. I ask that you would break the power of that judgment right now in Jesus' name. Just clap your hands together with me. Come into agreement. And Jesus, I ask that you would loose me from all judgment and accusation right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Now pray after me. Say, Jesus, I ask that you would give me the same grace to extend forgiveness towards others that I would no longer withhold judgment against others. And like Jesus prayed on the cross, I pray that my prayer would be the same. Father, forgive them. They know not what they have done. And listen, if Holy Spirit's showing you anyone right now, anyone that you've withheld forgiveness from, anyone that you've had a judgment against them, just do the same thing right now. You don't have to feel it. Just declare it. Just say, I forgive you and I release you right now of all judgment. It might be a mom. It might be a dad. It might be a teacher. It might be a brother, a sister. I forgive you and I release you of all judgment right now. Okay, now just hold out your hands. I declare the love of the Father to come and to pour into you right now. The love of the Father right now in Jesus' name. More, Lord, right now. The love of the Father right now. The love of the Father. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. The ocean. The ocean of your love, Lord. Let it pour in right now, Lord. More, God. More, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, your love cast out all fear. So even as we receive your love, Father, I thank you that the power and the stronghold of fear is being broken right now in Jesus' name. 
broken right now in Jesus' name. In fact, I even see someone and and you 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 are afraid of the dark and, and you can't sleep with the lights out, so you have to turn lights on because of fear of the dark. Jesus is healing you right now. You're not gonna fear the dark anymore. Because even when you turn out the lights, the light of Jesus is gonna come. If, if that's you, would would you wave at me real high? If that's you. Yeah, awesome. God bless you. Brother, would you come here real quick? I want to pray for you. The Lord highlighted you tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Man, the power of God's all over you. Just go and hold out your hands. If I could get a brother to come and stand behind him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Would you stretch out your hands? Yeah, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this word of knowledge. Thank you, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name, let your fire come. Right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah, right now, right now. Come, Lord, come, Lord, come, Lord. Fire on that fear. Fire on that spirit of fear. Right now, in Jesus' name. Brother, just declare with me right now. Just say, I renounce the spirit of fear. I set a stronghold over my life. Spirit of fear, you are not for me. I command you to come out right now into the pit. In Jesus' name. Spirit of fear, you hear them. Let them go. Let them go right now. Let them go right now. Out right now. Pray, church. Out right now. Right now. I said right now. Right now. Right now. Broken right now. All the way. 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 Loose it. Loose it from his gut, Lord. Right now. That's Jesus, brother. That's Jesus. Right now. All the way. All the way. All the way. Out. 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 To the pit. To the pit. Gail, you... Come, come, pray, 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 pray. Yeah, 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 all the way, Lord, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. No fear, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear. We bless this son. Hallelujah. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. That's Jesus. That's that's what this is all about. That's why we do this. We come together. We seek his face. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All the way, Lord. All the way, Lord. All the way, Lord. I feel like there's like a contract of, of hopelessness and it's and it has something to do with a contract and you're looking at signing a contract because you, you just said what's what's the point and, and you're you're gonna sign something away and it's pretty final and you're about to be done with something and you're just saying what's the point nothing can change if that's if that's someone here would you just wave at me real high you're about to make a pretty big decision Thank you, Lord. And the reason why I bring it up is because the spirit of hope is in this place, and I don't want you to sign away something of great, great, great value because God says he wants to redeem it. He wants to restore it. Maybe you haven't, and I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you what it is, but you're about to make a big decision. It's a final decision. I just want you to to hold up your hand because I want to pray for you. Is that for you? Or just bring it in? It's for you? All right. Yeah, c- come here. Come here. I won't get any details or anything. I just, guys, just stretch out your hands. Father, we thank you for hope. Yeah. Yeah, just come around them. Come around them. Brian, can you come stand, stand behind? Awesome. God bless you. You're so brave. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's the God that redeems and restores. Amen. He's the God that redeems and restores. That's who he is. That's who he is. You know, hope deferred makes the heart sick, you know. But a dream come true is like a tree of life. Yep, so Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You're here right now. Yep, so hope deferred. You're not of the Holy Spirit. You're not of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you for preserving this contract. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this holy contract. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for hope being deposited right now in Jesus' name. For hope, hope, hope. Church, pray right now. Hope right now. I speak fire right now on all hope deferred and hopelessness right now in Jesus' name. And God, I pray you'd redeem. I pray that the fire of God would come on this situation. The fire of God would come on it, God. That your 
fire would purify. Your fire would come and make, make what seems unholy, holy. And I, Lord, I thank you, Father, that the fire is burning and stuff's coming up, stuff's coming up, and it's overwhelming. It's like, what do I do with all this stuff? But I also see the gold is coming up. And the Lord says that the gold will remain and everything else will be burned up. So, Father, I thank you, Father, for your fire, God. Your fire, God. Let it come right now, God. Yeah, and you're going to see with new eyes. You're going to hear with new ears. And you're only going to hear what's coming from, from the Lord of life. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for an impartation of vision right now. Vision right now. Vision right now. To see through the Father's eyes. To hear through the Father's ears. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mom, if you pray, that's good. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. If you need healing in your body, would you just put your hand up real high? You need you need a miracle. Put your hand up real high. If you're around any of these people, I want you just to be the body of Christ right now. I want you to lay hand on them. And I don't want you to pray for them. I want you to command a miracle to be released. So if you need healing, hold up your hand real high. And just come around them and just put your hand on them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your power that's in this room. And church, just begin to declare healing, 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 healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need, do you need healing? Right, awesome. Thank you. How's it going? 